Hey everyone, my name's Hamilton and I am the creator and chief technologist of Hammy Labs. Today we're going to be talking about how I host my full stack business apps on Google Cloud for less than $10 a month. Along the way, we're going to talk about why keeping costs low is so crucial to my own business strategy, as well as why I chose Google Cloud uh, for hosting my own apps. Here on the channel, I talk about the art, technology, and businesses that I create, as well as how I build them. Along the way, I build a diverse portfolio of projects on my own path to building a sustainable practice of entrepreneurship. Now, a key part of my strategy is to keep costs low. This enables me to iterate on my problem, which increases my odds of finding a good problem fit, and it keeps my profit margins as high as possible. This is especially important for me because I develop most of my projects solo. Uh, this means that I really need to keep an eye on my budgets for uh, finances, uh, my own efforts and ongoing maintenance costs. There's only one of me and there's no corporate engine that's backing this. All of this plays a factor into my hosting strategy, uh, which is pretty straightforward uh, given the context I've provided thus far. The first thing that I need uh, in my host is a full stack functionality. I don't want to be confined by the abilities of my platform. Instead, I want all of the abilities at my disposable so that I can tackle any kind of business problem uh, with any kind of solution that I can come up with. The second is that I'm trying to minimize costs. I want to minimize the dollar cost that it has, and I want to also minimize um, the amount of ongoing effort this has. This might mean uh, allowing the platform to do things for me or making sure that it has some of the best in class tools available. And the third and final part of my strategy is that I want to have the ability to scale. I don't want to start something as a side project, have it explode in scale and not be able to catch up to it because my, the decisions I made early on in platform aren't able to keep up with that scale. So now let's talk a little bit about my implementation of the strategy and the kinds of choices I've made to optimize for it. So the first choice I made was to pick a fully featured cloud. And for that, I chose Google Cloud as my provider. The first reason I did this is because it has full stack functionality. Um, it is one of the big three or four players in the space and has pretty much any tool or service uh, that you could get anywhere in the cloud. The second is that it has the ability to scale. Um, because it's one of these big players, huge companies already run on it. It's been battle tested. I know I won't run into problems if and hopefully when uh, my projects actually do scale. And the third superpower that Google has that several of the other big players have as well, but a lot of the little players do not, is that it has serverless. And not just serverless, but serverless at a reasonable price. And we'll see in a minute that this is actually a pretty big superpower and one of the ways that I'm able to keep my costs so low. So let's talk about serverless and how my strategy really leans into that serverless component. For those that don't know, serverless is basically pay as you go. Um, in traditional computing, you might have like a server that's always just there waiting for something to talk to it. And then based on what request was made to it, it will give you a response or do some kind of work. Serverless is basically that, but instead of having a machine just running and waiting for a request all the time, there is no machine until something actually wants to request it. Then that machine will get spun up, um, some computation will be run, and then that response will, will be sent back. Um, then when nobody's asking for this machine to do anything, it'll just turn off and you don't have to pay for that. So by leaning into serverless, um, I'm able to minimize my dollar costs. Uh, that's pretty clear because I'm only paying for the work that the machine is actually doing. And for a lot of my side projects, I don't have that much traffic or people talking to it. So that's actually most of the time it's just sitting there doing nothing. The next cost savings we have is actually in the ongoing maintenance of this machine or worker. Um, in traditional computing, you often have to create the machine yourself and install things on it, deal with dependencies, um, maybe there's a security bug, all, all sorts of things like that that come with owning an actual machine. But with serverless, we're giving a lot of that power and configuration away and instead just saying, we need a machine, when there's a request, you do the rest. For some, this isn't the kind of power that they want, they want more configuration, but for me as a solo entrepreneur and a solo developer, this is great and minimizes a lot of the ongoing work that I would otherwise have to be doing. Now there are a few problems with serverless that you might run into. One is that traditional serverless can get pretty expensive at scale. Um, you're often paying for functions um, and things like that, which are a little bit more costly um, every time they are run than maybe a traditional machine might be if you run them for the same amount of time, particularly if you're paying by request or run as opposed to 
just the time that the server is on. And the next is that you're often brought into a world of vendor lock-in. Um, so a lot of these functions and serverless things, you're coding directly into the vendor or the platform's APIs, which means if you were to move off of it later, you would then need to go change all those code paths that were interacting with the platform, which then increases the cost of actually moving off that platform to somewhere else, which is not ideal. So for me, I really want to prevent the situations where a decision I make in the past is going to hinder my ability to scale or modify my platform in the future. And that's where serverless containers comes in. Um, and this gives us kind of some of the good parts about serverless while not having a lot of the bad parts of traditional serverless. So the benefits of containers, and for those that don't know, container is basically a technology that allows you to run code in an isolated environment. You can think of it as a shipping container. You have a shipping container, you write whatever code you want, you throw it in the shipping container, then you just give the shipping container to someone that can run the shipping container. That's, that's basically what a container is. Um, so because of this, I can write my code wherever I want, just throw it in that container and give it to someone that can run a container, and now I just know it's gonna work. Google Cloud is one of these that has this ability, you know, because it's one of the big players here. And so this actually allows something cool that maybe traditional serverless doesn't, which means that I can build it the same way everywhere. So if I'm running it on my local laptop, I know that it's gonna work uh, somewhere in the cloud. The next, of course, is that portability. Uh, it's just a shipping container. I just give it to someone. They know how to run a shipping container. That's it. So now I don't have any of that vendor lock-in that traditional serverless often uh, kind of pigeonholes you into. And the third cool thing about uh, these containers is that they often will scale by time and not by hits. And what I mean by that is that a lot of these serverless functions and stuff, you may have to pay for the hits or they might have a higher price for the amount of time that they're running. But a lot of these serverless containers, you're actually just paying for the time that the machine is on. And because this is usually a normal machine um, or normal instance size that you might get on other offerings on the platform, uh, it often is just paid for by time and not the amount of requests that are coming in. Now, normal machines can handle tens, hundreds, uh, sometimes even thousands of requests, depending on what the payload is, at the same time. So as you scale up in usage, oftentimes these containerized serverless are going to cost a lot less than, say, these containerized functions. Now, you have to do your own math uh, to determine like if that's right for you and your own workloads, um, but that's the the basic math that I've done. And for me, these containerized serverless is the way uh, that I've been running my own implementation. So finally, before we go into the specific technologies I'm using, I um, just wanted to quickly chime in on a question that I'm sure I'm gonna get shortly after this, which is why did I choose Google Cloud versus any of the other big players? For me, it was, I did a search and they had these values um, and they scored pretty well in these values, which aligned with what I wanted. And the other players that I looked at just didn't have the same kind of scores. Uh, so I went to Google Cloud and haven't regretted it. Um, those values for me are that it's really full featured as we've already talked about a lot here. It's trusted by a lot of big companies um, and they work really hard on their SLAs. They have reasonable prices. Um, from what I've seen, a lot of the, the payloads here are pretty reasonable and they have a really generous free tier. The UI is much, much simpler than <laughs> anything I've seen on the big players um, and often even better than some of the smaller players that say that they're simpler. Um, and also the docs are complete. The docs are very, very full featured and if something's wrong, you can just kind of point it out to them and they'll often fix it or at least get back to you pretty soon. So that's why I chose it. I'm sure this is gonna be controversial, but uh, th this worked for me. Okay, now let's talk about the very specific technologies that I used. This is the basic, the common system design that I use in almost all of my projects. Um, it's just a web tier, an app tier, and a DB tier. The web tier is just serving up the front end, um, dealing with external sources. The app is kind of the API layer, doing any kind of the app logic that we might have, any of the heavy lifting we might have dealing with um, talking to whatever else, you know, we wanted to add on the platform um, outside of this. And then the DB, which is just our uh, persistent store for any data that we might want. Now the technologies I chose from Google Cloud to actually host these things is Cloud Run. And this is that serverless container runner uh, that I was talking about previously. Um, and this is how we're using, this is what we're using to host those Docker containers that the web tier and the app tier uh, is built in. The second is Cloud SQL. Um, and this is just a managed DB, which I often run Postgres inside of. You can kind of think of this as like a serverless database. They manage the server for you. You just tell it what kind of database you wanna run and you can just run it and know that it's there. Um, one big caveat here is that unlike other serverless solutions, this one you do have to pay for all the time. There is no turning off and we'll see that 
reflected in the cost, mostly because it's a persistent store and databases take a long time to spin up. And I, also, I think they're just trying to make more money. Um, I think it is possible in the future to have managed DBs that spin down to zero, but I haven't seen it yet. And finally, I mentioned that Google Cloud can really scale really high. Um, so here's some technologies that you can use to really scale your app to you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of people without really changing this architecture much. But I won't factor them into the cost because this really is when you kind of hit that scale. And those common ones are just, you know, additional instances. You can horizontally scale all your services. Um, message queues for preventing overload of any one service, um, for dealing with things async. Um, and then caches just to make all of your reads and writes a little bit faster. But as I said, those aren't used in my more common system designs. So we're not actually going to factor those into the cost because typically you will never need those. So here's basically what my uh, cost came out to. So I have one cloud run instance for the web app. Um, usually this is free. My things almost always fall in the free tier because you know my projects don't actually get that much traffic. But if you just kind of do the math a little bit, you'll see that you can usually support up to 7,500 visitors a month for less than a dollar here. Um, the same is true for the app tier. So I'll have it there. And then we come to our Cloud SQL, which is our managed database. Um, and of course, we see this is by far the most expensive thing that we're paying for um, at $8. And that's because it doesn't spend down um, when there's no traffic. Um, so in total, we come out to about $10 a month for this very common hosting paradigm uh, for a full stack app that can handle pretty much any workload. And there you have it. That is how I host my full stack business apps on Google Cloud for less than $10 a month. And hopefully all that made sense. I know it's a bit complicated and there's like a lot of stuff to learn. I'm actually putting together some resources and boilerplate to help make this process of spinning up a full stack business app, just like the one that I presented here, um, very, very easy. The idea is basically to allow you to set up a full stack business app that can handle pretty much any workload up to 100,000 users um, within an hour. Uh, this is the same paradigm I showed here. And so with even just a little bit extra configuration, you should also be able to get to about 1 million, possibly even 10 million if you're a little clever, which is something that I've been struggling with um, in the past few months. And I think will make my iterations go faster and hopefully your iterations go faster as well. So if you're interested in that, um, stay tuned. I'll be talking about more here on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.